I, I want to talk about this because we've had the ability to actually experience this in person. Yes. On two different Horizon Power Cats and just what it means for the industry. I could probably use one of these. I want at home. these just <laughs> yeah, just because I want this just because it mm -hmm. feels like a spy gadget. The second I started reading it. Welcome to another episode of the Southern Boating Podcast. I'm Ian Sneed. I'm James Anderson. And today we have a special electronics episode for you. We're going to be talking about FLIR technology and Thermodynamica, specifically their HVAC system, which is incredible. We're excited to get into the details. Yes. Before we kick it off, remember, subscribe to the channel and click the like button right now. If you don't like the episode, you can take the like back at the end. With that said, let's jump into it. Do you want to kick it off? Do you want me to kick it off? No, I'll kick it off. Let's, Let's kick it off. So we're going to talk about Thermodynamica, mm -hmm. right? Oh, is that who we're starting with today? Yeah, yeah we're starting with Thermodynamica because okay. I'm well, already thinking air conditioning. Because <laughs> And you're, I'm, I'm screwing you up because you're... So you're <laughs> no, going to no, have to work I, from the bottom of your it, sheet up. No, <laughs> I actually had a Thermodynamica <laughs> and then FLIR. Oh, you did? I did. I see. Again, so, I can't read that far. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that works. You know, we're on the same wavelength. I, I want to talk about this because we've had the ability to actually experience this in person. Yes. On two different Horizon Power Cats and just what it means for the industry, what it means for individuals that want to run the system or those that are looking to refit their boat. And, and this might be a possibility of a refit or part of their refit and how it can benefit you. You know, one one thing that I remember somebody told me, you know, you're an adult when you get excited about, you know, buying household items and furniture and things <laughs> of that nature. So <clears throat> let's extend that philosophy a little bit because I started reading this and I got excited about HVAC. Yeah. I got mm -hmm. so excited reading well, this content. I, I think it is exciting for somebody that it makes a lot of sense for, right? Yeah. So just to get started, this is a different system than what we've been used to in boats. This is more like your household system mm -hmm. with a whole lot of tricks to it. Yes. Right? Um, the number one thing that I take away from this is, or really there's two big things that I take away from this. Number one, we're not using raw water anymore mm -hmm. to power the air conditioning. And on a vessel, that's a huge deal because that adds to humidity. Correct. So this is using our typical refrigerant agents. So whatever it may be, you know, the common one that everybody always refers to is Freon, even though we really don't, we use, don't Freon. use Freon. We don't use Freon, yeah. Right, but everybody refers to it, whether it's R134A or whatever. But it utilizes a refrigerant just like that, which allows you to have greater control of the humidity. Mm -hmm. And greater control of the humidity with some of these high-end materials that are going into these yachts is very, very important. Preservation is the name of the game on that one. Yes. Now, it's funny because the way I, I didn't even think about that when I was reading it up front. Right. What I thought was it's you know human nature to pursue pleasure and avoid pain, right? Mm -hmm. And when you're looking at an improved air conditioning system like this, what you're seeing is improved comfort. And a reduction of pain, which is not just, oh, it's humid, I'm uncomfortable, right? But it's a reduction in pain in, like you're mentioning here, taking care of and maintaining right. all of these materials. Because there's so many things that absorb that humidity from your soft goods to the fine woods that you use in building your yacht to many different aspects. This is one way to reduce that. But then the other side to this is the power consumption. Mm -hmm. which is unbelievable here. This unit and or units that you can use in combination to build in some redundancy is absolutely amazing. So one of the things that I took away from this is in the last paragraph of this article is how Mr. Rybovich describes the amount of power that it was using. He was comparing this when it was up and running mm. to pulling 11 amps worth of power mm -hmm. compared to a standard unit that he was using before utilizing raw water, the old fashioned, that pulled 40 amps. Right. So if you're running on a generator or a battery set, that is a huge savings. Because I was going to say, well, now- Especially a battery set. You're extending the life of the batteries. You're extending the life of the generator because there's less stress on it because of less use, mm -hmm. right? One thing real quick- 
Um, and it touches on what you're describing about that power utilization mm -hmm. and how it optimizes the power that it's using. Correct. It's the based off of the philosophy, uh, capacity on demand. That's their cooling philosophy. And so um, I wrote these notes down because I wanted to use the right terms. Variable refrigerant volume system. Yep. And what it does is it dynamically adjusts cooling output in real time. And it's space specific too. Correct. So you have the availability to change the spaces a little bit. It monitors it. So it's a very, very smart system. So not only is it going to give you greater control of humidity, give you greater control of your temperature and save you on your energy consumption. Mm -hmm. To me, Which this is was, a win, win, win right there. Right. And it was up to 70% up to 70%. From, what they, from what they've seen so far, you know, it's up to 70% savings and energy consumption correct which you know goes a long way now we got to experience this like we i said did, before yeah. on a horizon power cat and what amazed me now this horizon power cat that we were on this was part of a special system that they had designed mm -hmm. to kind of be like the off-grid system without having to use your gen set all the time this was something that actually increased the amount of battery life by fourfold that we were talking about when we had the opportunity and even greater than that depending on what temperature you're running at and and real quick for our experience uh, what happened we were on the vessel and we had a, a thermometer right we had a thermometer and, and a hue well i don't know what it's called but the device that measures the humidity, humidity in the room if please leave a comment let me know what that's called because i i'm blanking on it right now they used it when they were describing it to us but we put that up and they turned on the the system because up until mm -hmm. that point we were just talking and, and it, it was, had rained it earlier was that day. It was currently raining outside. So it was a Oh, you're right. It was, it was still raining it that was day. A hundred percent humidity outside, no it, question. It was it was a rough, it was a muggy day. So we're mm -hmm. in there, no AC going, and they turn it on and they have these devices so that we can see. And it was almost instant. Temperature started coming down. The humidity dropped and we went from like muggy to so comfortable and cool. Right. It was nice, cool, dry air. And we didn't even we didn't hear anything. Yeah, either. you did not hear the system running barely at it, all. It was it you was actually, wild. We honestly. had to be very quiet to be able to hear it run. We had everybody quiet. We had multiple writers, mm. editors, a ton right. of people in there. I think there was like ten there was about eleven 10 of us. people yep. in that room. Mm. And it was silent, silent. Absolutely. The other thing that I like to this is these units are a lot less in weight and smaller. Yes. Which is a huge aspect. So number one, reducing weight. Everybody knows what that means. Reducing weight is one of the things that we always try and go for. Now you're also talking about saving space. Correct. And what's one of the one things that we're always looking for is more space. Now when you get more space back, it allows the designers to utilize that space in a new creative way. Mm -hmm. Whether it's more storage space or adds more space somehow to the living capacity, whatever it may be, it's a huge thing. And the company also understands that reliability is such an important element to all boaters, all yachtsmen, that right. they've added, you know, there's options for different levels of redundancy within the system, too. So, so you, you can run multiple units and have some redundancy built in. So when one unit goes down, it's not ruining your trip. Exactly. Yeah. Right. It's just a matter of, okay, well, when we get back, that's got to get fixed. Exactly. It's not like we're going back right now and this trip is over. There's mm -hmm. a level of peace of mind that you get with it. That is, <laughs> that is right. To me, it's it's super important. I think it's the best thing since it's it's probably the most advanced cooling system that we have right now. Yeah, no, it, I definitely think it is. Now, touching on that peace of mind concept, mm -hmm. let's transition over to the FLIR. Now, this is one that's extremely interesting. This right? is a, Yeah, it's very interesting. So FLIR, if uh, people are unaware of what it is, just a quick little thing, it's thermal imaging and modern monitoring camera systems, mm -hmm. right? Because there's different types of products that FLIR produces. Correct. So I wrote down three products. Uh, the third one is more so a personal interest just because I think it's really cool. Um, but the two that I think our audience is are really going to enjoy is the thermal cameras mm -hmm. that they have for the vessels, but also the monitoring systems. So they have the MTMS, which is the Maritime Thermal Monitoring System. And that's focused on the interior of the vessel, right? So you're looking at your generators, your engines. 
Um, right. Uh, electric it can monitor outboard. if something's getting yeah. too hot. Exactly. What I also thought was very interesting, you can also monitor for cold things. Correct. Or yeah. a delta in temperature. Right. Right? So if it's monitoring two things that should be at the same temperature and all of a sudden one's hotter than the other, mm -hmm. it throws off an alarm for you. Right. So let's, uh, I know I kind of jumped around to give you a little preview of it, but let's jump to the camera systems that yes. most people would be familiar with right off the bat when you're thinking of FLIR, they're thinking, you know, night vision, right? Re correct. Yeah. I so mean, that's, that's instantly what most of our brains go to because that's what it's really mostly used for. With that, I know they have multiple models depending on your vessel sizes, right? Mm -hmm. And so... Well, not even your vessel size. It's how far do you really want to see. So right. yes, a little bit about vessel size, but also how far, far do you, you want to see. see. So I wrote down that the M300 series provides two nautical miles of sight range and has mm -hmm. 3,000 feet for... I think the smaller objects, smaller objects. So, you know, you'll see a person Kayaks, on a kayak, right? Yeah. You'll see a person mm -hmm. paddle boarding. It'll pop up, um, up to, I think 3000 feet. Then they have the M 400 XR, which has, I mean, there's multiple options for larger yachts. Uh, but that, if I remember right, you could see 3.7, 3.7 nautical, nautical miles. miles, right? Which is astounding. Mm hmm. Because that's at night that that's, you can see that's that That's at night that you're seeing that distance. Right. Then one nautical miles for, or miles, that's not miles, it's mile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one nautical mile. <laughs> <laughs> one nautical mile for small objects. Right. Now that's really far to pick up a small right. object. Because it mentioned being able to identify like buoy. You, you'll you be able to identify a buoy right. with this camera system at night up to a nautical mile away, right? Mm -hmm. Like. That's a huge. That's a huge safety element. That's correct. When it comes to to cruising at night or traveling at night or you know coming Absolutely. in late. Absolutely. I mean, so here in South Florida, we hear it all the time. You know, gosh, we, we, we've lost a famous baseball player to this mm -hmm. pitcher. Oh yeah. Is boaters out at night boating irresponsibly in the first place? But also, you know, if they had had a system like this, they would have known what was in front of them. Yeah. And been able to avoid it. It's going to help those people, but it's, even if they were being responsible, it, it's going to help them regardless. Absolutely. And I think that's a major thing, right? Being able to see at night, because some people do want to boat at night, whatever they may be doing out there, or they're going out in the pre dawn hours right. before a fishing trip. Or let's face it, sometimes like there's just dark clouds and you want a little extra a visibility. A little extra visibility. Right. And yep. that's the same thing. Transferring over to the MTMS system. Um, we kind of touched on it, but on here, it helps monitor and protect vital machinery and equipment, right? That's the key phrase this I wrote down. This is really interesting. So you yeah. can have these set up in your engine room and they can be monitoring pieces of equipment like an electrical board. And it can be measuring for the things like I mentioned before. Mm -hmm. It can measure for a heat range. Mm -hmm. So if something gets to a certain temperature, it's going to throw an alarm for you. Mm -hmm. If something cools down too much, it's going to throw, an, yeah, throw an alarm for it you. It can throw alarms. It can Or if you're recognize. monitoring two things against each other, a delta in temperature difference, mm -hmm. which is really interesting. Yeah. And so really any temperature anomaly, it will identify it and notify mm -hmm. you. E exactly and right. And I think that's the most important element. And, and this might be for, you know, Anybody that wants to make sure that the equipment that they're using is functioning optimally, which right. I would say is most boaters. Yeah. So like monitoring breaker switches or whatever it may be, you know, something electrical. This is huge for me because mm -hmm. everything before it catches fire electrically gets really hot. Yes. And it's throwing signs. Right. But usually it's not right in front well, you of you. You can't identify it because you Unless don't feel the Unless you're sitting there watching exactly. it. Exactly. And you know. And but so now, this can save that from becoming it, an, an, a long-term or very expensive well, issue. And saving you a lot of money in repair, too. Exactly. Because as it heats up, you're going to notice it heating up. So your repair cost might be a lot less because you caught the issue right. before it decided to ruin everything down, down grain for it, right? And yeah. You know, listen, that's, that's, a, that's a big deal. So the and last adding the le level of safety, I right? Mean, that's number one. The mm. last product that I wrote down, and uh, it's mentioned. I, kn in the I knew you were gonna <laughs> like this one, and I, I gotta say too, I thought it was pretty neat. The uh, um, the FLIR One Edge Pro. Yeah, 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 exactly. I could probably use one of these. I want at home. these just <laughs> yeah, just because I want this just because. Right. So f for me, I could use this in so many different ways. I mean. But I could use it when I'm working on the car, right? I mean, yeah, there's, yeah, there's exactly. especially my little 914 because you only get that much space right. 
to, to access work on the something. yeah, mm-hmm. and, unless I'm gonna actually gonna pull the motor out of the bottom of it. So let me describe real quick the uh, FLIR One Edge Pro is essentially it's a handheld camera that you can use to look into tight spaces, um, into uh, around corners, for example, into mm-hmm. areas where you can't actually see yourself. You could put this camera in and it syncs wirelessly to a smart device. So like your your phone an or iPhone, a tablet or Android, tablet, yeah. whatever it may be. So you can point the camera to look at whatever you're trying to look at and see on that device what the camera sees using the FLIR technology. So it's really, in my opinion, something that like it it's mm-hmm. feels like a spy gadget. The second I started reading it, yeah, it, it is, it yeah. is, it is. It's but just, it, it's it's very practical, right? Very, very. Practical. And I noticed here it's got two modes. So the FLIR MTMS is equipped with both FLIR Lepton thermal image, which is long wave infrared camera mode, as well as the visible camera with LED lighting. So, but it, that's the MTMS. That's the MTM. Oh, right. that is the MTMS. Yeah, not, yes, not the right. FLIR one. The FLIR one is right here. FLIR one is up. Yeah. Right. No, you. but you're right. The the MTMS does have the the it multiple does have both. options. Right. Yeah. But even then, I mean, it's still it's just a I mean, think about advantage. it. If, if you're trying to work on something that you have to make sure that things are running properly, you just did DIY project. You're checking to make sure all the temperatures are right, but it, the temperature that you're trying to measure is on the other side. You want a device like this to be able to check it. It's smart. It goes in the toolbox, gets used a lot. Yeah. It's a tool to help you with safety. Absolutely. Make sure that you did whatever you needed to do properly. It's working efficiently. Go back, put it in the toolbox. Maybe you go back and check on it. But it just raises your efficiency with being safe. Yeah. Right? And making repairs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, before we sign off for the day, I have to make this announcement. Uh-oh. Okay. Start tuning in daily between now and the start of FLIBS <laughs> because we're going to be putting out a daily video showing uh, different models that are going to be present at FLIBS for you to go see. So if you want to get a little research in before you show up, you want to watch these videos. It's going to be 10 videos, 10 days in a row. Then the day after our last video is the first day of FLIBS, right? Right. So make sure that you're, st- you're staying tuned. Make sure that you're subscribed so you're getting notifications. And with that, I'm James Anderson. I'm Ian Sneak. Go back and check us out next time. Or just tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs>